Hi, I'm Gary Amoroso, Executive Director of the Minnesota Association of School Administrators. Welcome to another edition of Take 5. Today we're very honored to have a special guest with us on our Take 5, Congressman John Klein, who is the Chairman of the Education and the Workforce Committee. That committee is responsible in the United States House of Representatives for the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, otherwise known as No Child Left Behind. Congressman Klein, thanks for being here today. We really appreciate it. I'm really glad to be here with you today. One thing I can tell you for sure about that, it will not be called No Child Left Behind again. Outstanding. <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think our members will be very pleased with that, sir. Can you talk to us a little bit about the process that you're going to be going through uh, as you try and uh, have a bill pass through the House? Sure, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, the point is I wanted to get beyond being passed with the House. We're trying to get this uh, reauthorization all the way to the President's desk and have him sign it. So Senator Alexander and I have had several discussions about this uh, and we've agreed that we're going to move through our process in the House and he's going to move through the Senate process and then the hope is that each body, the House and the Senate, will have passed legislation and we can come together in conference to, uh, to work out something that we can send to the President. We in the House are taking up the bill as passed in the last Congress, which we call the Student Success Act, be some small modifications. We're going to take it through a committee where there's an open process of amending it. Members from either side of the aisle can offer amendments. When we get through with that, we'll report it to the uh, full House. And the majority leader, who is the floor leader, said we will have floor time the last week in February. So we're moving very quickly to get this done. Uh, in the Senate, they're just going to move slower. <laughs> but they are working uh, in parallel, but, but we're not trying to co-write a bill mm -hmm. because the Senate has its own membership and its own process. They're going to move it through uh, their committee <clears throat> that Senator Alexander chairs. The senior Democrat there is Senator Murray, Patty Murray. They're working out their own process, and I've uh, told Senator Alexander that I'm happy to uh, stand back and watch while they work that through. Once they pass a bill, because of the nature of the Senate, that is they have to get 60 votes, and there are only 54 Republicans, so uh, by definition, their bill will be a bipartisan bill. And also because whatever comes out of conference uh, committee, which would take place sometime uh, in the summer probably, whatever comes out of conference has to be passed then by both the House and Senate. So it will be a bipartisan bill. What the breakout's going to be, I won't guess for you, but I, I believe it's a bill that we'll be able to send forward to the President before the end of the year. Okay, that's good news. We, we, we're, we're hopeful that we can have something in front of the President. That would be fantastic. Can you talk to us a little bit, uh, Congressman McClan, about what you see as some of the major components of the bill that you're moving forward in the House? Well, first and foremost, we're trying to pull back the uh, massive federal footprint that came with No Child Left Behind. And you know, we've talked uh, for oh, years about what an intrusion this has been, uh, unprecedented intrusion of the federal government. And uh, many of your colleagues and uh, principals and teachers and education stakeholders around uh, the state told me way back when this first passed, and I was not there to vote on it, passed before I got there, they said, this, this is not going to work because every school in America will be failing by 2014. So I think even before I was sworn in, I was being told correctly that it was seriously flawed. So we want to we want to put a whole lot more local control, local and state control. I think uh, one of the things that was one of the good things from No Child Left Behind was this idea of gathering data, which comes from testing, and then disaggregating it so you can make sure you're not leaving any groups behind, which was the purpose of that. So you may have a very good school that 95% uh, of the kids are doing good, but if you're consistently leaving the same 5% behind, uh, that's not good. So somebody needs a report card. So what we're doing in our bill is we continue to require the annual testing as in current law. The difference is that those results there's no action then taken by the federal government. There's no AYP, there's no school improvement, uh, fire the principal and all those uh, draconian things. The report card is to parents, school boards, administrators, the state, 
and then they can take action according. Parents deserve to know if their school is, is a good school, if their kids are in a good school. You need a report card, and I, I believe that the uh, annual testing without the horrific consequences that are in current law is, to, is a good thing. So we'll have that in there. There is a uh, prohibition in our law, which we're again calling the Student Success Act, a prohibition on the Secretary of Education that he cannot incentivize Common Core or any other common standards. Doesn't prohibit any state, Minnesota or any state, from using Common Core, but it prohibits the Secretary from incentivizing. Because that's caused such an uproar around the country. Just looking at the pieces of it, we think that it is going to give uh, parents more opportunity, more choice, school boards uh, more influence, states more influence, and the federal government less. As you look at the process, as you look at the components that you're moving forward with, as you look at what you've heard from Senator Alexander on the, the Senate bill, do you see any significant challenges that need to be overcome in order to find common ground, in order to have the process be successful in getting a bill to the President? Well, sure, there are going to be things that are controversial. There's no, no question about that. There's already been a lot of discussion about the testing and accountability piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, the administration uh, wants to keep that accountability at the uh, U.S. Department of Education. Uh, they get some support from a number of Democrats. Uh, there is discussion on whether the testing should be annual testing or grade span testing or alternate year testing, and that debate will continue. I, I think it's important. I'm supporting annual testing because I think that you, your colleagues and parents, deserve a report card, and I think the way you get that is through testing. Not the high stakes testing that we have right now, but, uh, but through annual testing. That's going to be debated. Uh, and there will be lots of other issues. There will be issues uh, concerning charter schools, uh, school choice, public school choice, private. All of those things will be debated and voted in both the House and Senate. But again, my, my belief is that at the end of this process, we're going to have a bipartisan bill sometime, I don't know, summer, mm -hmm. early fall, something like that. Now I'm really getting out there with my crystal ball. <laughs> But we'll have a bipartisan bill we can get to the president's desk. I, I think one, one thing that is pretty much recognized uh, in Congress, House and Senate, is that the current law, the status quo, is unacceptable. This business of trying to do whatever you have to do to get a waiver and make sure that Secretary Duncan is happy with it and then it's a temporary waiver so you have to apply again. That is now uh, seen, I think, uh, all over the country and you know, in the round tables that I've hosted that you've attended, that's the, the almost universal that everybody at the table, all stakeholders have said that's not acceptable. That'll help us. Well, we're excited that this process is moving forward, and as you said earlier in the conversation, we've been talking about the reauthorization for a number of years. I know that you've been working hard uh, to move it forward, and I think there's a composition now in the uh, the Senate and the House that hopefully can create a bipartisan bill that mm -hmm. will, will benefit the children. Uh, within the country and uh, we appreciate the fact that you're looking at empowering the states and, and empowering local school districts to make some decisions so we thank you for that. I'm glad to do it. I just think it's the right thing to do and putting so much power into the hands of the United States Department of Education has proven to be a mistake. So we're going to fix it. I want to thank Congressman uh, John Klein for participating in our Take 5 today. We're very fortunate that, uh, as our members, you are now uh, hearing from uh, Congressman Klein what the, the vision is, what the plan is, and let's hope that as we move towards the uh, latter part of 2015, we actually have a bill in front of the President for his signature. With that, if I can be of service, please feel free to contact me at 651-319-1211. Thank you, and thank you, Congressman Klein. My pleasure, Gary. Always a pleasure.